Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 159. Turn to, please turn to page number 159, problem number 14. This problem that you see there, problem number 14, is the exact same problem that appeared on the exact same page number in the first edition of the revised GRE. We have already solved every single problem in the first edition. We're just redoing the same problems at a little bit of a faster pace. If you need to watch the original solution at a slower pace, you will find the original solution on day number 66. Today is our day to today is our lesson number 287. So here's the problem. We are told that we have a set which consists of integers, positive integers, we are told. This set consists of all positive integers, and these sets possess a certain quality, a certain characteristics. And that characteristic is that if you were to take the square of these, set, uh, these numbers that appear in the set, if you were to take the square of each one of these elements, it turns out that the square of that quantity will be a sum multiple of 24 and 108. The question is, once we have located what elements belong in this set, once we have figured out which number qualified to be the member of this set, the question is, once we have, once we have figured that part out, the question is, which of the following would be divisors of every single element that we see in set S? Divisors, as you know, is just a very fancy way of saying factors. The question is, which of the following will be the factors of every single element that appears in the set. That's what we have to figure out. Let's get going. If you have not yet watched yesterday's video, day number 286, where we did the exact same problem, but of a little bit of a simpler version of it, instead of 24 and 108, we had some smaller numbers there. If you have not watched yesterday's video, make sure you go stop this video and watch 286, understand the solution of uh, that we, solution to the problem that we did on, page, uh, on day number 286 yesterday. And then try to do this problem yourself before you continue watching it. You will get more out of it this way. You understand? Let's, be, let's begin. Let's begin. The solution is as follows. We are told that n square is a multiple of both 24 and 108 and then if that's true then that that implies that n square must also be a multiple of the least common multiplier of 24 and 108 one more time we are told that n square is a multiple of both 24 and 108 and now if that's true we are told that it is true obviously then that implies that n squared, that quantity n squared, must also be some multiple of the least common multiplier of 24 and 108. Now if I lost you already right at this point, if you're lost here, if you do not know what the hell I'm talking about, if you don't know what I'm babbling about, you need to go, go and watch yesterday's video. I'm not going to explain everything right now. We already did that yesterday, the explanation part. I'm going to continue here. So if you're having trouble understanding from here to here, if you're have to, having trouble making a transition from this step to that step, watch yesterday's video and you will understand it. So what's the least common multiplier of 24 and 108? 24 and 108. Let's start dividing by prime factors. We get 12 and we get 54. Let's divide one more time by 2. We get 6 and we get 17. 17, this is weird. Did I make a mistake? 27, not 17. Because 17 would have been a prime number itself. That, that would have... We change the story quite a lot. Let's do one more time. Three. Uh, let's do. Let's do three times now. So we get two and we get nine. And that's about it. We can keep on going, but that's it. So the least common multiplier. The least common multiplier is uh, we get a eight times twenty-seven. Eight times, or rather, let's put it down. Put this down as four times nine times three times two times three times two. And we are told that n square is a multiple of 24 and 108. We are told that there exists 
n squared simply means that there exists a perfect square. What we are, what we are being told here is that there exists a perfect square which is a multiple of 24 and 108. Our job now is to figure out what is the lowest possible value of that perfect square. What's the smallest possible perfect square that we can find which happens to be a multiple of 24 and 108 knowing now that the least common multiplier is this quantity. Well, if the least common multiplier this quantity, then n squared that we're looking for, the smallest one, the smallest n squared, the smallest perfect square must be smallest n squared or the smallest perfect square must be, must be this quantity right here, which is 4 times 9 times 6. But 4 is a perfect square, 9 is a perfect square. 6 is not a perfect square, therefore the smallest one must be the 6 times this quantity. This is our n square. The very first, the very first n square that appears that qualifies to be the member of the set that we're looking for, set S, the very first one that, that qualifies is this quantity right here. That's our n squared. And therefore, and therefore, our m, the very first n that appears would be uh, this is n, this is n squared, so this would be 2 times 3 times 6 times 3, which is which 6, right here. That's the very first one, which is 36. The very first element that appears in the set is 36. Let's put it on the top here. So there you go. We just found, we have just located, we have just located the very first element, the very first member of our set, which happens to be 36. The next one is going to be our n squared, of course, is this quantity right here, which is the 36 squared, which is the 36 squared. The next one is going to be 2 times 36 or 4 times 36 here. The one after that is going to be 9 times 36. Our n squared is going to be 9 times 36, which is 3 times 36 and so on and so forth. That's it. We just found, we have just located the elements that belong to set S, all of them. Which, is, which are simple multiples of 36. The very first element is 36, then 2 times 36, then 3 times 36, then 4 times 36, and so on and so forth, forever and ever. Amen. Now we're almost done. We just have to answer the question that is being asked. We just have to answer the question that is being asked, which is, I'm going to put down the question on the blackboard one more time. The question is very straightforward, very simple. What, being, what, are, what, we, what are being asked is, which of the following integers which of the following integers are divisors divisors of every single element in set S? Divisors, as we know, is a very fancy way of saying factors. And the answer choices are right here. A is 36, B is, sorry, A is 12, B we are told is 24, C we are told is 36, and finally D we are told is 72. Now, we have to make sure that these are factors these are factors, which of the following are factors of every single element that appears in the set, every single element. Now having said that, obviously, we don't have to worry about doing it out every single one because first of all, it cannot be done because every single set means exactly what it says, this goes on forever. 1 times 36, 2 times 36, 3 times 36, so on and so forth, until the cows come home. We just have to look for the very smallest one, which is 36. If these are the factors of 36, they, then they must also be the factor of everything else that appears because these are just multiples of 36. Do you understand? So is 12 a factor of 36? Can we, can we, in other words, can we divide 36 by 12 evenly? Well, find out. So 36 divided by 12, yes. There you go. 36 can be divided by 12. 36 divided by 12 is an integer. That is a factor. 12 is a factor of 36. 12 is a factor of 36 and therefore and therefore 12 must also be a factor of 2 times 36 3 times 36 4 times 36 and every single element that appears in the set is 24 a factor of 36 let's find out 36 divided by 24 is going to give us 3 over 2 which is not an integer 
since 24 is not a factor of 36, therefore it does not qualify because it needs to be a factor of every single element. 12, or 24 will be a factor of some other numbers that will appear in the, in, the, in the set, but it is not a factor of 36. As long as it's not a factor of at least one of the elements in the set, it does not qualify because it needs to be a factor of every single element in the set. Is 36 a factor of 36? Of course it is. 36 divided by 36, of course it's an integer. So that one works. Is 72 a factor of 36? The answer is no. 36 divided by 72 does not equal integer. 72, 36 is not a factor, uh, 72, 72 is not a factor of 36. Make sure you pay attention. One more time, 72 is not a factor of 36. 36 is a factor of 72, but 72 is not a factor of 36. 72, if you divide, divide 36 by 72, we'll end up with a half. We will not get an integer. Therefore, the answer is A and C. That's it. Like I said, if you need to watch it again, you have two choices. You can watch yesterday's video. I'm looking for my cap here. Is what I'm looking for. That's why I'm distracted here. If I don't find it right away, it's going to dry. If you have trouble, if you had some trouble understanding it, if you're not happy with it so far, if you, if you still feel that you're a little shaky on it, you, can, you have two choices. You can either watch yesterday's video, day number 286, where we did the same exact problem but in a simpler version, or you can watch the original solution on day number 66. Okay? But I do, I do agree with you. This is, this, this is not a straightforward, this wasn't a straightforward question. This, is, this, is a, uh, this was a little, uh, a little tricky. Do you understand? This was a, this was a bit, bit of a googly for those of you who understand cricket. I'll see you tomorrow. All right? Bye now.